Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Stephanie Boyd. I'm the Director of Clinical Outreach and Placement here at Frontier Nursing University. And we also have Rosalie uh, Seitz on the line. She is um, part of our marketing team here at Frontier. And I know that we have um, our presenter who is Dr. April Phillips. She's the Clinical Director for our Psychiatric Mental Health Nurse Practitioner Program. Uh, she and the Department Chair, Dr. Callahan, uh, are currently traveling back from campus, I believe. And so I'm hoping that uh, one of them is going to join us shortly. Um, but in the meantime, I thought we'd go ahead and get started because I know everyone's time is valuable and we want to be able to get some information to you all today uh, as well as we can. So, okay, we're going to get started. Rosalie is going to be in the chat and she will make sure if you have questions in the chat box that you can um, be able to ask questions there. And then I'm going to go through some information on some PowerPoint slides. I'm not going to read them to you because you all are very intelligent people and can do that. But of course, I want to hit the high notes and then I want to save some time at the end for questions that you may have. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to have Rosalie. She's, she's just doing everything over there. She's going to do our slides and she's going to do the, um, the Zoom Excuse, excuse me, Stephanie. Yes. Um, hi, my name's Deandra Smith. Um, I'm an hi, admissions Deandra. counselor. Hi. So hi, we're Deandra. Hi, we're here to answer any questions about the admissions process if needed. Perfect. Thank you. I didn't see You're you welcome. on the call, um, but no, where, okay. I'm screen, where I'm presenting, I can't see everybody. Anymore, so <laughs> that's okay. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks for being here. And Stephanie, this is Brittany Kinnison. I just jumped on to see how things are going. And I heard from uh, Dr. Callahan that he should be on here soon. <laughs> awesome. Great. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Okay. So as we get started, I know that a lot of you probably have already inquired about our program before. And so if you have a moment, I'd like for you to place in the chat uh, currently how you heard about Frontier and what are you most wanting to learn about Frontier today? So some of you have done your homework. I see questions about AANC pass rates, which we'll talk about on, in our slides. And then how long does it take to hear back? What percentage of applicants are admitted? So um, those are great, great questions. And we can have that information available for you all today. And I know Deandra is also going to talk about... Um, admission deadline, so application deadlines. So once you do apply, what the turnaround time is. And um, I see we have CNEP graduates. We have some people here who have um, graduated from the Frontier Midwifery Program that are interested in postgraduate certificate. We've had some people that have heard from coworkers. a while back, an ADN to MSN bridge program for students who came in as an RN with their ADN. Uh, so welcome, Lauren. It's good to see you. Well, Lauren might want to try to answer some of these questions just about what frontier, what our community is like and what our culture is like. So Angela's heard about co uh, from a friend who's in the FNP program. Um, we have some people done their internet research. I hope that everything you were looking for on the internet was easy for you to find. But if not, we can share information with you today. Um, all right, we've got another grad that was looking for a post-grad certificate. Oh, someone came to our table at the APNA conference. I was at the APNA conference, Jeremy. So glad to see you're here. Um, and you want to talk about class structure, mandatory login times, things like that. Okay. I think a lot of what you all want to know more about, we're going to touch on in these particular slides. Um, and then, like I said, we've got people in the chat that can also share information and links with you all for some of the things if we don't hit all the high points today. Okay. All right. I love that a lot of you know people who are in the program that's the to me that's our probably our biggest um referral source that's how a lot of our students hear about frontier uh we we do spend a lot of time and effort getting our name out there but i think it's always comforting if you as a potential student know someone who's been in the program they can really speak to you about our community our culture and also about the rigors of the actual program so i'm glad uh that you're able to be here tonight Okay, Rosalie, if you wanna to go to the next slide. 
All right, so for those of you who are new to Frontier or who are just learning about us, um, this is our mission statement. I'm not going to read it to you word for word, but it's our longstanding mission statement with only a few tweaks over the years. Um, we really are here to help um, provide accessible education for advanced practice nurses, in particular psych mental health nurse practitioners. Um, and we really want you all to be leaders in primary care and to serve all individuals with emphasis on these populations. So that's our mission statement. And I've heard that Dr. Um, Callahan is on the call now, so I am going to pause and uh, introduce Dr. Callahan. He is the department chair for our Psych Mental Health Nurse Practitioner Program. Hi, Dr. Callahan. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much for getting started. We were having some uh, issues on my end getting connected, so I apologize for the delay, no everybody. No problem. We're happy um, to have you, and we have a lot of people here that know a lot of Frontier grads and heard about um, our program through Frontier, so just to let you know. Great. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Jess Callahan. I'm the department chair for um, the psych mental health uh, specialty track at Frontier Nursing University. Um, I've been a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner for uh, 18 years and um, have been teaching for the last um, 12 years and have been at Frontier for the last four years. So um, one of the th things that's also unique about Frontier as opposed to other universities is all of our faculty are in clinical practice. And so if you end up choosing to come to Frontier or accept it to Frontier, um, you're gonna be working with faculty that are uh, walking in the, in, in the shoes of our attrition rate or is it related to personal things? So things that come up um, that, that impact their ability to maybe complete their studies and they have, to, they have to take a break from school or take time off from school. We have very few students that program. I mean, we, you know, we still have some, but it's very few. Our attrition rate um, is less than 6%, which is pretty significant given the number of students that we have um, at Frontier. We have uh, over, we have over 2,500 students in the university and then with students. We are not a program that's, that's, that's like a puppy mill program that just cranks graduates out. Our, our uh, MSN students, the students that come in that are RNs, uh, they're looking to, to have the specialty of, um, of psych mental health. Really, the minimum of time that you're going to be here is 24 months. Um, the, there are postgraduate certificate students, which are folks that are already our nurse midwives uh, or, or nurse practitioners. Uh, they're here usually about 18 months minimum. Now, I know there are other programs out there that you can get quick, you can finish quicker, right? Um, but I will tell you, our program is, um, we, are, we, we train you to be competent psychiatric nurse practitioners um, and become specialists and leaders within your community. And, and I don't know that every, every university, particularly universities that are shorter programs than ours can say that. Um, to practice as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, uh, you have to achieve a board certification exam, very similar to um, those of you that are already practicing as nurse practitioners that maybe you took after graduation and very similar to uh, the NCLEX exam that you had to take to become a nurse or to get licensed as a nurse. Uh, there is a board certification exam for psych mental health nurse practitioners and you have to pass the exam uh, to, be able to, um, to be able to get licensed in your states um, is, a, is a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. Um, the national average for the board certification pass rate overall is about 82%. At Frontier, we're at 93%. Um, and then the first time pass rate is about, 80, is about 81% and we're at 93%. Um, and so, you know, granted, I would love to be higher and I know we're going to get higher and we're doing some things to help support that. But on the exam, we score about 10 percentage points higher than the national average, those benchmarks. So um, so we're doing everything that we can do to help support students. Our students are successful in the board certification exam and they're successful in their clinical practice. Um, some of the big things about Frontiers, we are the oldest um, uh, distance education, nurse practitioner education uh, program in the country. We have over 80 years of experience. Um, we have students and alumni in every single state. Um, and again, there's our board certification pass rate and look at some of our, uh, some of our graduates. Um, and then, like I said, we consistently exceed the, the national average on the exam in all domains. So next slide. All right, student support. One of the other things that's very unique about Frontier, our student support uh, system. 
uh, a lot of times academic advisors are faculty and and they're teaching and and you just don't you, you just don't necessarily and i've been at other universities and i've been an academic advisor and i've had 50 students and a full teaching load and i would say do you think i really could dedicate a lot of my time to the academic advising session there you know to, to that role the answer is no it was just too untenable and so um, one of the things that we've done at Frontier is we have a group of dedicated academic advisors that are not faculty that are here to support you, um, you know, during your time here. And then we also, that's very unique, we also have uh, clinical advisors. Our clinical advisors um, are here to help you with clinical site placements. Um, they're familiar with all the clinical sites that we have across the country. And of course, um, and of course um, um, uh, Ms. Boyd leads that clinical advising team. And we are very successful in getting students with uh, um, clinical uh, placements. We also have dedicated clinical faculty so that when you're in the clinical portion of the program, you have dedicated faculty uh, that, that supports you, that work with you and work with preceptors and communicate with your preceptors and evaluate you when you're in the clinical portion of the program. Um, we have online student mentoring groups. We have a, a very active diversity impact program with multiple students um, interest groups or special interest groups that both faculty and students are involved in. Um, and we have um, uh, our financial aid section. We have uh, scholarships that are available uh, to help uh, with tuition. We're very affordable. And, and I think our online library resources are some of the best around. We have a great librarian staff and, um, and um, they're here to support supports you. Um, yes, Kaylee, you're able to choose your own preceptors. That's part of this. A big part of who we are as Frontier and why we don't, quote, place you and say you're going here and you're going here um, is because the goal is you get back to our mission statement is the community component of it. You, we, we, we want you all to be active in your communities. We want you to practice in your communities and we want you to have impact in your communities. And, and so, so we want you to do your clinical rotations in your communities. Can we assist you in getting you clinical placements elsewhere? And that sure we can, if you're having problems, but our goal is really so that you can practice in your community and have an impact in the community that you're going to work in after you graduate. Okay. Next slide. Okay, um, our student scholarships, um, they're available during our spring and fall term cycles. Um, we run four terms a year and we offer every single course each term. So you don't have to wait like you do at some places where you, oh, I have to take this in fall because that's when it's only offered. Okay, so Frontier, we offer, um, we offer uh, multiple uh, we offer four terms a year, 11 week terms with two week breaks in between. Um, during our spring and fall award cycles, uh, we have um, we have uh, scholarship applications. Um, you have to have a minimum of 24 credits at FNU and a minimum of a 3.25 uh, GPA. We have 20 scholarships that are available. And uh, last year we awarded over $700,000 uh, in scholarships. Mm -hmm. We also um, have received several grants as well um, that we're able to put, um, that we're able to um, offer some of that grant funding to students in, in, specific, in specific areas. Um, for example, our psych mental health program, we, we received um, a $1.9 million HRSA grant over four years, and we are providing um, up to one point, we're providing at least $1.1 million back to students um, in the form of stipends to help them, clinical stipends to help them during the clinical portion of the program offset any costs from, you know, taking time off to work and, and that kind of stuff. So there's some, there's a lot, there's several opportunities that are like that around um, that you can, um, that, that you can apply for. Okay, next slide. All right, our student support and clinical outreach and placement. And this right here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just, since we have the, since we have the, the director of the clinical outreach and placement program with us, I'm gonna turn this one over to Ms. Boyd and let her talk about this with you all. Perfect, thank you, Dr. Callahan. So I see there are a lot of questions that are really specific related to the clinical, the number of clinical hours and the type of preceptor and clinical sites you can use for your clinical experience. The great part about this is we have a website that will outline a lot of this for you, and I'll put that in the chat so that you can see it after this session. 
Um, but the, the other part about this is that we have a general email that you can also email us, clinicaladvising at frontier.edu for some of those specific questions. Um, but, you know, obviously we are here to be able to support you as you develop your clinical site, um, your clinical plan, which includes your clinical sites and your preceptors. So we have a dedicated team of clinical advisors that are assigned to you from the day that you come to Frontier Bound, which is your orientation. Those clinical advisors will meet with you to discuss um, kind of how to take all the pieces and put them together. We think of it more of uh, the clinical experience as a kind of a puzzle. Um, there are some programs that you'll look at where you'll see that they will place you in a site for six to nine months and that's where you'll get your experience, but that's really not how it works here. We will work with you and depending on what you want your clinical experience uh, to look like, we will help you put those pieces together. Um, with our psych mental health students, you have 675 clinical hours uh, that you need to complete along with uh, a certain number of competencies or skills. And so we will work with you to make sure that your sites and preceptors on your plan will be able to allow you uh, to meet all of those requirements. Um, of course, depending on what state you live in and if you're a postgraduate certificate student or not will depend on what that what that really looks like. Um, some, some states are very specific in the type of preceptors that you can use, but our clinical advisors are very well versed in what that looks like for your area and for your program. So you are able to meet individually with the clinical advisors to develop that plan. We also have group advising sessions and we have a lot of resources available to you. One of the ones that our students use quite a, quite a bit is our community map. So once you're admitted to the program, you have access to a database of psych mental health nurse practitioner preceptors and clinical sites. Um, and these are sites where our students have rotated previously or are planning on rotating. Um, and they like to work with our students. So you're able to look at that data, database to be able to find some potential sites and preceptors. We also um, have students that come in already knowing where they wanna rotate. And that's great too. We'll help you put that plan together and make sure that you get all of your information put into the system so that our credentialing department will then take that um, and credential your site and help do all the onboarding and everything. So there's a team of dedicated people that are here waiting to help you with that part. Um, if you come in and you're not sure, you know, what you, where you want to rotate at or who your preceptor might be, then we'll get that ball rolling with you as well. Um, and we also have a clinical services coordinator. She is a one-stop shop for, she's kind of the concierge for all of our preceptors. So um, we work closely with our preceptors. We let them know what the incentives are for precepting. We offer honorariums to our preceptors, continuing education credits. And so she will work uh, with your preceptors to be able to make sure uh, we take care of all of those needs so you don't have to worry about that. You never need to write a check out for an honorarium. We, our accounting department does all that. So it's quite a, um, a dedicated and large team that helps you put all these pieces together. Um, but certainly we're here to help you really customize your clinical experience. And really, hopefully that experience allows you to, to be able to get that foundation for the practice that you want to have once you graduate and you're out um, you know, practicing either on your own or with a group. So um, we love talking with students. And again, I'll drop our web link and also our email address in this uh, chat because there are a lot of questions here and I want to make sure that I don't miss any. I'll try to answer some here, but you can message us individually and we'll be happy to share other information with you if it doesn't get covered today. Thank you, Great. Dr. Callahan. I think I covered it all. Yep. And I was, uh, I covering the uh the chat while you were talking um so um can you pre so there's a couple questions about preceptor types um and so we you have to precept at least 50 percent of your hours with the psych np um but we do we do a lot of lawsuits precept with psychiatrists psychologists and then as miss boyd mentioned there's certain states um that allow students to precept with license uh, master's level uh, or other doctoral level uh, counseling providers like social workers, licensed mental health counselors, those sorts of things. But that's but those are things that our our clinical advising team is aware of in terms of the rules and you know regulations per state. Um, so that if you if you are looking to have a certain kind of a preceptor, they'll be able to tell you, yeah, you can use that preceptor um, um, and or or not. Okay. Um, and so let's see. Next slide.
Okay, um, before I get into this, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions. Um, so telehealth, um, yes, we, are, we allow our MSN students to complete 405 of their clinical hours via telehealth with a preceptor. Um, for our postgraduate certificate students, we allow you to complete all your clinical hours with, a, a, with a telehealth, doing telehealth. We train you in telehealth uh, within our program. And, um, and so you can work in a different state um, that you live in. You just have to be licensed as an RN in that state um, that you're practicing in, uh, that you're, that you're going to precept in. So you can um, do that. Um, we have some very specific rules about um, you working in your, in your own, um, in your workplace uh, related to clinical sites. Basically, if you're, if you're already a mental health nurse um, and you want to do, you want to do um, uh, a clinical rotation on the unit that you work on, we're not going to allow that because it's a conflict of interest. Now, if there's an outpatient mental health service that you work in um, um, and, or that, that you, that's in your organization, but you work inpatient and you don't really work with any of those providers, then that might be something that we would, you know, we, we may be able to allow you to do. Um, Frontier Bound is, is uh, yes, it is required uh, on campus. It's an on-campus requirement. Um, and just a couple things about Frontier Bound. Actually, I just got back from Frontier Bound last night. Um, it, is, it is an opportunity for you all to, um, really, we have three goals of our Frontier Bound. It's to, um, it's to inspire you, it's to connect you with each other, and it's to get you all ready uh, for your, um, as you embark upon your educational journey. And so we believe that the best way to do that is, is on our campus and in person. Uh, we, we used to do it, we, did, we had to do it virtually during COVID, um, but we found out time and time again um, that uh, that just wasn't effective as bringing folks available. Yes, we do have a, on campus, we have dorms, uh, they're single, right now they're single occupancy dorms. Uh, we have a brand new campus um, that we just opened up two years ago, and it's about 10 minutes from the Lexington Airport, so very accessible. Um, and, um, um, and, and so you're able to, um, you know, stay on campus and we have a nice dining, dining hall. The food is really good there. Um, and it's a, it's a busy two and a half days. It's a two and a half day experience. Generally people come in, uh, on the first day by 4 PM, we start that evening and then we wrap up on the third day, uh, about 3 PM so that folks can get out of there. Okay. Um, and so let me just talk about, um, uh, some recognition for FNU. Um, we've we've been recognized as, as one of the um, as the top um, ranked online MSN programs by U.S. News and World Report. Uh, we've won multiple uh, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion awards by the Higher Education Excellence in, in Diversity, um, and um, and we have been recognized uh, three times as the I think we were also recognized in 2017 as a great place to work for. And then uh, we've also received um, the International uh, Distance Learning Award uh, in 2021. So we have been we have been doing distance learning, like I said, uh, for uh, over 30 years now. Uh, when 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 the pandemic hit, we were ready to go because we were set. I mean, we had to make some adjustments, um, but um, but we were already. You know, we didn't have a we didn't lose a lot of students. Um, we, our enrollment continued to be where it was at and students were able to, um, you know, complete their, complete their programs of study. Okay, next slide. All right, so our degree options here, uh, MSN, um, that's what we talked about earlier. Our MSN is for our students that are, um, that are, um, RNs that are looking to, to become specialists in psych mental health nursing and become nurse practitioners, postgraduate certificates, those are for um, those are for folks that are already nurse practitioners or nurse midwives. And then our um, our DNP program, um, you're able to you're able to transition into our DNP program right now, a direct admission uh, through 2025. Starting in 2025, it'll be an applicant process. Um, but you're able to transition into the DNP program um, directly. Uh, we already talked about the, the timeframes for our postgraduate certificate students and MSN students, our terms. Uh, the DNP uh, takes about 18 months to finish if you decide you want to do that. 
Um, it is very cost effective. And those of you that come into mental health, I highly recommend the DNP because many of our colleagues are doctoral prepared. And also if you want to teach as well, um, I'm a post-master's DNP, meaning I had a, my, I was already a nurse practitioner and then got a DNP. And I'll tell you, it was, um, it really changed my way of thinking in terms of day-to-day -day clinical problems, it looked, it looked at systems and being able to, um, you know, being able to uh, solve um, organizational problems and improve care across, you know, systems of care. So, um, so those are those are our degree options. Next slide. All right. So our admission criteria for our um, MSN students: you're an RN with the current active li unrestricted license um, in any state. You have a bachelor's degree in any field. Um, you have a 2.8 cumulative GPA from the highest nursing degree that you earned um, and that you were good at academic standing and you have at least one year of RN experience. So that's our criteria for um, our MSN students. Next slide. Postgraduate students, um, you have to um, have the same criteria, um, but have a master's degree or high uh, a 2.8 uh, cumulative GPA from that highest nursing degree. Um, and then you have to be an advanced practice nurse in one of these specialties. Um, and so we do, nurse anesthesia is not on here. So if there's any nurse anesthetists out there, um, then um, you know, reach out to me and I can tell you kind of what that would look like. Uh, so to be a, considered a postgraduate student, you have to meet this criteria. Next slide. All right, our next application deadline is April 5th. Um, coursework uh, begins on July the 3rd. Um, and then the application, it's, it's really straightforward. Um, our tuition is very, very affordable at $646 a credit hour. Um, and so, you know, looking at other institutions, um, we're very, very affordable. We are, um, we are, um, successful and the students, the students are successful that we graduate. And, um, you know, quite frankly, I've been at several other universities and, and by far one of the things that's unique about Frontier is what our specialty focus is. And that's on graduate nursing education, teaching nurse practitioners and nurse midwives. Uh, again, to getting back to our mission to be competent um, um, clinicians and leaders within their community. So we do not have a non-ARMP MSN track. Uh, when you apply, um, you apply for a specialty track. So you, um, so in this case, this is the psych mental health um, uh, specialty track. So if that's what you're interested in, you would apply and you'd specify that on your, um, on your application. So let me just take a look here uh, at a couple of the questions. Uh, the didactic portion is online and it's primarily asynchronous. We do have some synchronous requirements, but no worries. We, we let you know well ahead of a time when those, um, when those synchronous requirements are. Um, one of the things that's also unique about with us is we're not a death by discussion board program, right? There's a lot of programs that are online. You do the work, you take exams, and you have these long discussion boards. That's not who we are. Um, you can expect uh, uh, pre-recorded lectures from faculty weekly. Uh, many faculty do live sessions that are recorded. Um, so that if you're not able to attend the live sessions, you can still go back and look at them. Um, we have uh, a communications policy that's part of our culture of caring here at Frontier. Um, and, and when you reach out to faculty, uh, you can expect to hear from them no later than 72 business hours after you um, respond to them. The vast majority of our faculty respond within minutes to hours <laughs> for students. Uh, some faculty even respond on the weekends. So um, um, in terms of transfer credit, um, um, we, we, you, there is an opportunity if you have another master's degree, this doesn't, it, uh, this doesn't count a postgraduate certificate student or you've taken other program or other master's courses elsewhere. Um, we, our, our catalog uh, specifically has uh, the requirements for transfer credits, but I will tell you, it's hard to get transfer credits with us now because we are um, because the, with the, there, there are only four courses that you can get transfer credit for in the MSN program. Um, and three of those have, to, if you're going to get transfer credit, they have to meet very specific criteria and they have to have been completed uh, within, the last, uh, within the last two years. Um, the one course that probably we see the most transfer credit for is health promotion. 
Uh, somebody took a master's class in, in, in nursing in a different nursing institution or an institution that offered nursing curriculum and they uh, took a health promotion course, that would be something that, that, could, um, that, that could transfer in. Um, and so we, we specialize in, um, so three Ps can transfer in, um, but again, they have to be uh, done within the last two years prior to your application, within two years of your application for those to, to transfer in, okay? Um, our program is very flexible. You can take one course at a time, uh, we have some of our master students that that finish that it just takes them a little while to finish and and um, you have up to five years from starting the program to finish um, that rarely, rarely, rarely happens. Most of our students, most of our MSN students are finishing about 27 to 30 months. Most of our postgraduate students are fin finishing about 18 to 20 months. Uh, if you need to slow down, you can. Um, there are some things that your admissions advisors, um, you know, can answer for you, but if you're accepted, that's where our academic advising team comes in and can help tailor your specific program of study to whatever your needs are. Okay, um, other questions? Jess, there was a question about uh, simulation in the courses and someone wanted to use it, know if we used iHuman or a, a similar program. So, um, so we don't use iHuman. We use a program called Simulation IQ um, with um, with cases or with um, with cases that uh, were developed by faculty. We also uh, extensively use uh, um, we also extensively use uh, standardized patients um, as well throughout the curriculum. There is one other on campus requirement besides frontier bound after you complete the didactic portion of the curriculum you'll come on campus for a week-long intensive called clinical bound and the clinical bound experience is to get you you know have you all apply what you've learned get an opportunity to make some mistakes learn from those mistakes work with faculty um, so that you're prepared to start your clinical rotations most people come to clinical bound they leave on friday uh, and they start their clinical rotations the following week so um, we accept students from every state except for new york uh, Karen, we have a fair amount of students from Washington State. Um, the reason why we don't accept students from New York is because they close their application process, uh, applications to nursing schools uh, to become um, to become to be a, a, for, to have the ability to practice in New York. So it's nothing that Frontier did. It's all related to the New York State Board of Nursing. But we're in every state. Um, um, our midwifery program is in New York, but not our psych and P or F and P programs. Okay. Next slide. All right, uh, Stephanie already talked about the clinical experience. Uh, we do have minimum requirements uh, for uh, clinicals. Once our students start clinicals, uh, we wanna see you do uh, for the for all, all clinical courses, except for your very last one, you're required to do a minimum of 20 hours a week in clinical, minimum of 20 hours a week in clinical, okay? The last term you're required to do a minimum of 30 hours a week in clinical. And that's because we want to move you guys through. We want you to graduate. We want you to get done. Um, and, and also because of the numbers that we have in our, in our program, each of our clinical faculty, um, we have kind of set caps on how many students they can manage. And so, you know, if we had students just doing five hours a week, it's going to take them a lot of time to do that. And we really want to see you all, you know, like I said, once you hit the clinical portion, we really want to see you uh, you know, complete that, complete that clinical portion, um, you know, a minimum of 16 weeks for the clinic, for the um, MSN students and a minimum of 14 weeks of clinical for the postgraduate certificate student. No, well, it depends, Kaylee, you can apply, but uh, you have to have a year of nursing experience. So if you were already an RN, um, you know, an ADN or practicing as an RN and now are getting your BSN and you have over a year of clinical experience, sure, you can apply. But if you're a BSN that doesn't have any, yeah, see, perfect. So you, you're fine with applying, um, um, you know, probably for either fall or um, winter term of next year. So the, the transfer process upon your admission, um, you know, you will work with your admissions advisor and then your academic advisor about you make requests to the registrar that you want to transfer credits in. And we have a process for that and our admissions counselors can help, um, um, our admissions counselors will help you uh, go ahead and, um, you know, kind of navigate that. Uh, Kaylee, you, I mean, you can apply before July, you just wouldn't be able, you'd probably start, 
um, earliest you could start would probably be, would be fall term because of the way things are set up. So we are a very competitive program. Thanks for asking. Um, um, we are, we have about 250, um, somewhere between 200 and 250 applicants a term, and we accept uh, between 80 and 90. So, um, you know, our, we are, our, we're very competitive. Um, and so the acceptance rate, you know, is roughly about somewhere between 35 and, um, you know, 40%. So, um, again, part of the reason why when we, when we accept you all, um, is that, you know, if we didn't think you could be successful, you wouldn't have been admitted. And so if, if, if we think you can be successful, we have a lot, we want to make sure that you are successful, which is why we have the resources in place, which is why our attrition rate is so low, which is why our graduation rate is so high. Um, so um, we have a lot of things to support you all on that. Okay, next slide. So um, we have a lot of different faculty that are here to support you. Um, you know, as I, I'm the department chair, so if you're accepted to our program, then I would be your department chair. We have a clinical director that oversees our clinical faculty and and the um, that oversees our clinical faculty and um, and also our um, the clinical portion of the curriculum. Dr. April Phillips. Um, we have course coordinators that coordinate our courses and uh, course faculty uh, within every single course. As I mentioned earlier, I mentioned this group of folks. We have our regional clinical faculty. Our, um, that supervise you during the clinical portion of the program. Um, and then we have our academic advisors, which help you with your curriculum and programs of study. And, and they're there to basically answer any questions that you have. Uh, a lot of times academic advisors are kind of de facto counselor or students can go with them to the, any issues that they're having that might impact their ability to complete uh, coursework and, and that kind of stuff and, and give guidance. Um, our clinical advising team, um, you've already heard from, from Ms. Boyd and what, her clinic, what, what their team does. We have financial aid officers, we have credentialing coordinators um, that help credential our sites, and then our financial aid team that helps, with, um, that helps out with um, uh, the financial aid needs. The other thing that we're very excited to announce is we also have, uh, we've contracted uh, with a company that provides um, uh, remote or telehealth counseling services, mental health counseling services uh, to all students in all in, in uh, across the country. And so that's something that not a lot of places have either is, you know, if you're struggling or you need some help or some assistance, uh, we have counseling that, um, that um, you know, can help support you. That's at no cost to students that's provided. Uh, you have so many sessions. Um, that Frontier pro provides. And, and we just launched a program, I think about a month and a half ago, and we've had about uh, 500, uh, 500 students access that, that service. So again, you know, just something else that helps support students, uh, student success. Um, okay, next slide. All right, so this is our Versailles campus. This is our brand new campus. Uh, like I said, it's located about 10 minutes from Lexington Airport. Um, and so um, the, the student lodges are in the top, in your top left. If you're looking at the screen, that's an example of, we have three student lodges. Um, and then this is the president's house in the middle there. Um, and then the dining hall is, in the, is at the bottom center. Um, and this is a back view on the bottom left of the student lodges and then our entrance. Um, and I think that's the, is that the, that's the welcome center, isn't it? Isn't the one on the right, the Welcome Center? I think it's the back side of the Welcome Center. Um, so uh, beautiful new campus. We have walking trail on campus. Like I said, we're about 10 minutes from the Lexington Airport. Very easy and accessible to you. Okay, next slide. All right, and so um, here's one of our uh, recent graduates, um, uh, Caitlin Riklowski. She graduated just this last year. Um, and she's, um, she was our student leadership award uh, winner for 2022 within the psych mental health departments. And this is an example of the impact that you all can have on your, uh, in your communities. And so um, um, she, there was very few psych NPs that were involved um, in psychiatric care in rural Wisconsin. And she was one of the first to help establish that. Um, and she also helped establish a screening and support program uh, for families 
um, that um, had um, that that had, uh, miscarriages or stillbirths, um, and then she provided them with local resources and um, got them connected to the care uh, that um, that that they needed. And um, the reason why she chose FNU is our, our rich history and our dedication to the underserved population and flexibility with online courses. So, great. Thanks, Lindsay. Appreciate that. That's awesome. Um, so, uh, somebody uh, in the chat talked about the three Ps, um, and um, um, that is for, it's, it's for, if you're taking the three Ps as an FNU grad, um, within the last five years, you're fine. But if you haven't taken, if you haven't, if you want to transfer those in and they're greater than uh, two years old, you're probably, you're going to have to take them again. And the part of the reason why is we just can't guarantee um, what that looked like in the courses that, that you've taken uh, before. Okay. All right, next slide. Uh, here's another one of our alumni, Cody Pittman. Um, and um, he has his own own practice, um, and he provides mental health services via telehealth. Cody and I worked closely together, and I gave him uh, a lot of mentorship on how to uh, start a telehealth practice because that's something that I've been doing for the last 17 years, and I have my own telehealth company. Um, and he believes that Frontier gave him a well-rounded um, uh, knowledge base that allows him to continue to advance, uh, advance his nurse practitioner knowledge. So next slide. All right, so we've had a lot of questions in the chat. Um, really, in terms of the transfer stuff, you really talk with your admissions counselor first. Um, they're your first stop. Uh, we have a transfer credit process, and they'll be able to give you um, any more information about that. Um, you know, and take a look at the you know for the for the three Ps. Um, you know, take a look at our catalog. Talk with your admissions counselor, and they can give you some guidance in terms of you know, those, um, those things transferring in. Okay. Um, and, and preceptors, uh, we have a lot of different clinic, uh, clinical visit types. Uh, a lot of times students have, you know, they can have, uh, you know, multiple preceptors. Again, all of those things are things that we'll cover uh, during frontier bound. And then we have support in place to make sure that you're, that you meet all the clinical requirements and clinical site visits. Um, and our admission, is there anybody from admissions on here that can talk about the response after applying? Yes, I'm from admission. Uh, okay. Typically, it takes between four and five weeks to get a response. And all applicants are notified through email uh, either way. Um, and also, we encourage students to not only check their email, but to also check their spam folder. Great. And Thanks. it's, oh, one last thing. And it's yeah. four weeks from the time your application is submitted for review, not from the deadline. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, we do rolling admissions, which is why it's not the deadline. So as we, um, as you get into it, when, when you apply, that's what DeAndra saying is, is that it's four weeks from the time that you submitted your application. Okay. Um, and so do we go into counseling or more geared towards med management? Well, that's a great question. We do have a psychotherapy course. We teach you a lot of different psychotherapeutic modalities, um, and um, and you're gonna you're not gonna be an expert in one, but you're gonna have the skill set that you need um, to draw from different psychotherapeutic modalities in the context of you know the type of patients that you're working with. Um, you know, the focus of the mental health nurse practitioner is to evaluate um, patients uh, for both medication and therapy. Um, unfortunately, the way healthcare economics is set up and the payers, um, we don't get reimbursed nearly as much for an hour long therapy session that we do for a, a 30 minute uh, med check. So one of the things that we do is we, we teach you all to incorporate psychotherapeutic modalities throughout your visit types, regardless of what that of what that looks like. Um, and so we talk a lot about some of the economic sides of things in terms of practice and that kind of stuff. If you're looking to become a therapist, primarily a therapist, this is not the program for you. And I'll just, I'll just, I'm just all about transparency and candidacy, candid and being candid. If you want to become a therapist, um, then um, that's primarily what you want to function as. There are other programs that are going to prepare you better than our program will. And that's generally the same for all psych mental health nurse practitioner programs. Um, most programs are true. You know, you have a psychotherapy course, you're going to learn a lot of different psychotherapeutic techniques. Um, but the vast majority of psych, Pediatric mental health nurse practitioners 
um, incorporate therapy into their sessions with along with medication management. And a big part of that is just because that's the way the reimbursement structure is set up, uh, unfortunately. So if you're looking to primarily do therapy, you know, again, this isn't the program for you. DeAndre, there was another question about applications. The last one from Christy Santander. Here. Okay, our application window uh, for the July 2023 term is January 12th through April 5th. Um, our website does give uh, this information if you kind of go under the admissions tab, I believe it's located. And plus, if you request information, your admissions counselor can also go through that with you. But the application does open on uh, January 12th. Okay, great. Um, and so if you live in an independent practice state, how do you advocate for yourself? We're going to talk a lot about that in this program um, and, um, and, and how to get a seat at the table. And a, a lot of it has to do with credibility. And, and part of the credibility is to is, is, is knowing what you're talking about, being an expert clinician. And we're going to give you those foundational skills within this program to be able to do that. Um, Ashley, we do have we do have military students that um, that uh, uh, that are in our program. I think um, um, you know we I believe we do take tuition assistance. Um, yep, so yeah. DeAndre's shaking her head. Yes, yeah. um, and so um, the other thing is, so we we do have active duty uh, folks in our program. The biggest thing is negotiating with your, and so I'm retired, I'm retired army, by the way. So I can really speak to this because I know, um, it's negotiating with your chain of command when it comes to the clinical portion of the program, because that's really where things are going to take you away from your specific job. Um, and in terms of prescribing different things, yes, yeah, Stephanie, you can do that depending on where, where you're at and what your, um, and what your, um, uh, state says we also part of the program you're also going to get training in medication assistant therapies uh, you're going to get the, the quote waiver training um, so that when you graduate you're able to apply for an mat waiver to be able to prescribe uh suboxone um to to patients with opioid disorders as well so uh, again you're going to get a lot of training um, in that as well All right, any other questions? If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to our admissions team. Um, if they can't answer the questions, they'll reach out to me and I'm certainly willing to answer the questions and we wish you all the best of luck and, and we hope to see some of you, if not all of you in our, in, our, uh, in our courses at some point. So take care of you buddy, have a great uh, rest of your day and a, and a, um, and a good, uh, good holiday season. Take care.